Hi friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. Today we are going to do another shelf spotlight. I try to do one of these every month where I kind of focus on a different topic or type of book that is on my shelves. These are not my most watched videos, but I enjoy doing them just because it gives me a chance to look at my books in a different way and kind of group them in different ways and share that with you. Today I have quite a few books to share with you and in honor of school starting for a ton of people this month, I decided to focus on books about books, books with book or bookshop in the title or library, books set in a bookshop, books set in a library, all of that type of thing. So I have five books first that I have read that I'll talk to you about and then I have about 10 others that have book or bookshop or library in the title. So let's just jump right in. The first one that I'm going to share is a YA fantasy. This is actually the third in the in the trilogy. This is Ash and Quill. The first one is Ink and Bone and then Paper and Fire is the second. I have read Ink and Bone and Paper and Fire but it was probably three years ago that I've read them so I would need to reread them before ever jumping back into this one. But these are set in a imaginary future where the Great Library, that's the name of the trilogy, the Great Library, the Great Library kind of controls knowledge and information and owning physical printed material of any kind is dangerous and radical. And of course, there are some people who are trying to change the system. I really enjoyed the first two. I think these books are gorgeous. And I am planning on somehow, someday, finishing this series, but I don't wanna just jump into this one because it's been so long. But takes place all around books and printed material. I have two middle grades that I absolutely loved. The first one I read this past March for middle grade March and it's A Kind of Paradise by Amy Rebecca Tan. Actually, I, I'm not sure I read it in March. That doesn't matter. This is about a middle grade girl who kind of gets in some trouble at school and ends up having to do some volunteer time at her local library. She discovers the importance of a library within a community as she gets to know the staff of the library and the patrons who are consistently coming in and she is changed because of it and it's just so lovely definitely a love story to a library <laughs> very very good another one that was very fun is pages and co this one is tilly and the book wanderers the first book i have not read the second yet but i know that it's out by anna james who does have a booktube channel a Case for Books, I think is the name of her channel. But in this story, Tilly discovers that her grandparents and she have this ability to interact with characters from books. These characters can come out of their books and speak with them and they can go into the books to communicate with the characters. Very interesting story. There's a bit of a mystery involved as well and her grandparents own a bookshop called Pages & Co. So it does take place in a bookshop and books and words are a very, very huge part of this story. Lovely. The next one it takes place in a bookshop. It doesn't have books or bookshop in the title, but it has stories. The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. This is about a, a man who is a bit set in his ways, a little bit curmudgeonly, and one day receives a package of sorts at his bookshop and it changes everything for him. Uh, it's a really lovely story and I really did enjoy it. it. This one is unique in that each chapter starts with a quote from some short stories, which is very kind of cool. I loved this book a lot. Read it a couple years ago. And the fifth one that I have already read is How to Find Love in a Bookshop by Veronica Henry. I loved this story. It takes place in a small village in this bookshop um, where this girl, Amelia... Amelia, uh, her father passes away and kind of leaves her this bookshop, which is really struggling financially. She has to try to decide if, how and if she's gonna keep the shop open. But in the process, she really gets to know the community and the people who frequent the bookshop. And people are kind of breathing down her neck about updates that need to be made and potential sales that need to be made and all of that. And she kind of discovers her own strength along the way. And of course, a little bit of love, because how to find love in a bookshop. That is the dream. <laughs> now we're moving on to books that I have not yet read. These are all on my TBR shelf. This first one sounds a lot like How to Find Love in a Bookshop, the printed leather, the printed letter bookshop by Catherine Ray. I've loved some of the Austin inspired books that Cap 
Catherine Ray has written. I've not yet read this one, but it is about a bookshop that this woman acquires somehow. Her aunt, I guess, owned the, the bookshop. She inherits it and again, the bookshop is struggling financially and she finds out a lot about herself and others as she decides what to do with this bookshop. Um, yeah, sounds just basically like the other one. <laughs> Um, these two are on my 2020 recommendations cart. The first is uh, The Bookshop on the Corner by Jenny Colgan about a bookshop in Scotland and a literary matchmaker. Is it Scotland? I'm not sure where it takes place. Nina Redmond is a literary matchmaker. Pairing a reader with the perfect book is her passion and also her job. Until yesterday, she was a librarian in the city but now that job is no more. She moves to a sleepy village many miles away, buys a van, transforms it into a bookmobile, a mobile bookshop. She drives it around from neighborhood to neighborhood, changing one life after another with the power of storytelling. I think that sounds lovely. And then this one is not rated very highly on Goodreads, but it's the Little Paris Bookshop. And I believe this is a, a similar, a man in a boat calls himself a literary apothecary, thinks he has a book for every kind of situation in life. Maybe it's not in a boat. Oh yeah, on a barge on the Seine. He prescribes novels to people, but the only person he can't seem to heal with books is his, his self. Um, so we kind of learn about his own life and the lives of others that he touches with the books that he prescribes for them. These next ones are not specifically about a bookshop or a library, as many of those were, but a book or the book world plays a big part in them. The first is Paris by the Book by Liam Callanan, and I believe in this one a, an eccentric novelist goes missing and his family uses his work and clues from his work to travel around Paris trying to find him or find out what happened to him. Sounds really good to me. <laughs> the Last Book Party by Karen Ducas. I don't haven't heard too many people talk about this one. This takes place in the 1980s and um, surrounds the publishing world. So I don't really know much of what the plot is of it. And I don't think it specifically has to do with books, but it does take place with 25 year old aspiring writer who's struggling as an assistant, but wants to become a writer. Coming of age story, 1980s publishing world, aspiring writer, the last book party. Sounds intriguing. <laughs> this one, is very different, The Physic Book of Deliverance Dane by Katherine Howe. And in this one, it's a historical fiction, dual timeline, and deals with the Salem witch trials. And in, two, 1990, in 1991, I believe a young woman discovers this book, or uh, maybe an ancestor or somebody that was in Salem, Massachusetts in 1681. A crime lost to time, a secret buried deep, one book unlocks an unimaginable truth sounds very good for fall. <laughs> and we have The Book of Lost Friends by Lisa Wingate. This one is also historical fiction, also dual timeline. I believe we have a young teacher in 1987 who takes a job in Louisiana and finds a book that is somehow connected to these three friends who escaped the South back in 1875. One of them was a slave a freed slave. One of them was the pampered heir to a now destitute plantation. And one of them was that heir, Creole half sister. These three girls run away. One of them is stealing an inheritance. One of them is in desperate need of running away. And somehow there's some secrets that are involved with this book that this teacher, young teacher, landed in the, the deep south in Louisiana quite out of her comfort zone, discovers their story, and I don't know what she's going to do with it, but I am excited to read another book by Lisa Wingate. The last two I have, I don't think have anything to do with any specific book, but they both have book in the title. The first one is the book of Essie, and this is by Megan McLean Weir, Weir. and this one is about a large family, uh, I don't believe they're a Christian family maybe, um, who have their own reality TV show and one of the teenage daughters ends up getting pregnant and how do they deal with the fame and the TV side of things while also dealing with their daughter who is 
not married and young and now pregnant. I've heard some very mixed things about this one, but it does have the word book in the title, so I'm including it. <laughs> and the last is the book of our book of a thousand days by Shannon Hill. This sounds like a fairy tale. In this book we follow a young woman named Dashti who has taken the oath of a lady's maid and somehow her, the woman that she is sworn to work with, it gets this punishment of living in a tower for seven years and because she's taken this oath she has to go with her. Um, she kind of tries to fight for their freedom and um, suitors arrive trying to get them out somehow. She's ordered, Dashti is ordered to commit a crime punishable by death, assume her identity, and talk to the suitors. So Dashti is is asked by her lady to pretend to be the lady when these suitors come calling. And in the process, I'm sure she's going to find true love, right? Sounds really good. I'm not sure what a book has to do with it, but it is in the title. <laughs> so that is all the books that I'm going to talk about today. There are a lot of them. I would love to know, have you read, especially any of the ones that I haven't read? How is the beginning of the school year looking for you? Many of you are parents of children who are looking at a school year that's going to look very different. And I know there's been a lot of stress and a lot of hard decisions for so many of you and my heart goes out to you. And I'm thinking about you as you start this school year. I'm glad that you're taking a little break to enjoy some booktube and hopefully some reading of your own. I would love to know if you have any other books that have the word book or library or bookish or are set in a bookish setting. <laughs> I would love to know any other recommendations that you have for me down below or if you've read any of these books and enjoyed them. Which ones should I pick up next? Well, not next, but sooner rather than later. And let's chat in the comments below about anything you guys want to talk about. You know I love talking with you down there. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Check out all my links down below for ways to connect with me and support my channel. And I will be talking with you in another video very soon. Bye.